We are gonna finish at least the game plan with some French, finally. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Susanna. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Yes. Fantastic. I see that. Good. <laughs> uh, is it evening? Yeah. yeah sure. sure. Good evening. I'm Susanna, and I would like to sing Quel ivresse bonheur suprême from Verdi's Jerusalem. talking about him. Okay. <laughs> cool, I like props. <laughs> oh. So start again? Yeah. All right. to swim in the pool like a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, yeah. <laughs> Which, odd 
oddly enough, is what the music is doing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do you know how much you just lit up? Yeah. <laughs> but 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 what I'm so happy about, Susanna, is you also had it on your own. Mm -hmm. You had um you had um it was right there when you sang it the first time, mm -hmm. right? And you were in this slight battle, not a big one, not like yeah. the first day, like whoa. And it was, but it was like, come on, come on, it's okay. And you were like, well, I don't know. Come mm -hmm. on, it's okay. And you would come out and then you were like, ah, okay. And then for the end, it yeah. was there. And the second time through, it went, can I, can I come play? And you're like, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was out. Mm -hmm. Yeah? How does it feel? It's a lot easier to interact with other people than by yourself. That's true. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah. And to create that kind of magic without feeling like you're doing too much mm -hmm. and all that. What you have going in your favor is it's in your voice. Mm -hmm. Understatement of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your voice. Um, all you have to do is smile. All you have to do is smile. And take it from here, which is holding that thing back. Mm -hmm. Do you see? It's holding it back. But it's coming. Like now, it's like it wants to come, and you're like, hold on, oh, it wants to come out here. <laughs> no, I'm not really sure. Please. And when you go, okay, and then ah, thank you. That's that's what it needs. So it needs to smile. It needs to be in your eyes. Mm -hmm. It needs to be in your eyes. And then you have to open to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you know, um, what I would love for this aria is that people don't just remember the end. Yeah, I want you to have them right there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna get that with the words, and you're gonna get it with the variation of the staccato. Mm -hmm. So it's not always Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it has to come from a real place, mm -hmm. has to come from something concrete, thank you again, has to come from that place, and it has to be this suspense of, of, of wonder and disbelief, and drinking it in, and bathing in it. Mm -hmm. It's this kind of thing. We try one more time? Sure. You, it's, yeah, you can sing this eight times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Words. <laughs> First staccato. Okay. Let it surprise you. Uh -huh. Because um, this is just bubbling up from you, right? You're not prepared for this. Yeah. In real life, we don't rehearse the aria before we uh, talk about. I mean, we don't go, I'm going to go into class and I'm going to say this and that and that and this. It just, when we're overwhelmed with emotion, it just pops out. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's welcome to my world. I'm never prepared. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, did I just say that? <laughs> right? Yeah. So don't yeah. filter it, but, okay. but react to what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that felt good. I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to go up here. Oh, no, that's too much. <laughs> okay, let it be play. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay. Because j'aime, okay. j'aime, not j'aime, uh -huh. j'aime, oh, okay. okay, and one more time. <sighs> Stay there. You, I want you to be painting. I want you to paint this. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. But like, mm -hmm. um, you have magical powers to paint. So okay. it's. 
Jessica, and it's painting like a wall that's 20 feet away. Jackson Pollock, but more of Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> um, right from, oh yeah, we can start again. Yeah. Okay. No Okay, sure. No doing it. I know. I'm sorry. I'm like, uh, that's all right. That's getting all right. too much in my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I but just follow me. You can copy me if you okay. want for the moment. Okay. I don't know the music, but I just, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, the, it's not so much about singing, but it's this kind of freedom and the joy of mm -hmm. find these different images that um, are frothy and fizzy and champagne okay. and inspiring you. Oh, there's a spot. Oh, oh, look, I can do this one pink. And mm -hmm. uh, this kind of thing. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and then it's sort of getting a little bit out of here. Yeah. Again, this is not, you're not going to do this in the audition. <laughs> Although they'd probably be very entertained by it, you know, <laughs> they'd probably be very entertained. Um, but it's so you can physicalize it and it's not just living here mm -hmm. and here. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's thrilling. It's genuinely thrilling. Mm -hmm. um, do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to like have another stab at it? Do you want to do something else? What do you want to do? Can I have another stab at it? Do you need water? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> when I sing high Fs, I, I, I like <laughs> want to drink some water too. <laughs> I would venture, I mean, because you've been sitting here for an hour and a half and you did that. I think this must, it's rock solid for you. I think it's a fantastic opening aria for you. Okay. For auditions. Mm -hmm. People are not going to expect it. People are not going to expect it, but you have to give it. Yeah. You have to give it. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's um, and you have to give it not in a soubrette way. Yeah. <laughs> give it with everything that you are and that sparkle in your eye. Mm -hmm. You can put painting in now if you want to physicalize it or not. But it has to be ha ha and listen to what just happened. It is the most incredible thing ever. Mm -hmm. And be surprised by the joy and let that surprise and how good it feels take you to the next phrase. Mm -hmm. And then that felt so great and it just keeps unveiling. But really play with all of these lines. Mm -hmm. Play so that it's like finger paint. It's um, you're painting with your voice. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just whatever your favorite color is, whatever you love, that's what this is. Okay. okay. From the beginning again, or just? Yeah. Okay. And just, I want you to imagine nobody has ever sung this aria before, and you have total, complete permission to blow us away and to introduce this piece to us. Mm -hmm. Verdi just wrote it. 
He just handed it to you. You're a fast learner, so you learned it really fast. <laughs> and you want the world to know what Verdi has just given birth to. Mm -hmm. So this is the one and only time we're ever going to hear this. Okay. And just <laughs> blow us away. Okay. Not with your voice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing this. And thank you for opening, because this is what the world is dying for. Mm -hmm. We need it. Mm -hmm. And you have it to give in spades. All of you guys do. All of you guys do. This is the solution. This is it. It's not complicated. It's just not complicated. But we have to clear out the interference so that this comes through. The music deserves it, the public deserves it, the composer deserves it, you deserve it. And it's splendid. And we're changed because of it. So thank you. Thank you. Brava. Also, we can't wait to see what you do. <laughs> It'll probably be okay. <laughs> You guys, you guys have, comp I, I'm sure I'm not alone in saying this, you have completely won my heart over, all four of you, and for different reasons. And um, that leaves me changed, and I'm so grateful for it, and I learn from it, and it's an example due to a, the safety of, of, of this space that's created, of just jumping off the cliff. Because come on, life is short. Why wouldn't we jump? It's what we want to do. You know, we want to fly, we want to soar, we want to fly. So you're doing that, and I thank you. Can we have a very special moment to thank the pianists, George and Justina? Thank you, guys. in the
the sort of unsung heroes because you have no idea how important that support is. Mm -da, mm -da, mm -da, mm -da. And they're breathing with the, with the singers all the time going, come on, you can make it. And we feel that. And so you guys have been splendid in these days. Thank you. Um, I also want to spe send a special thank you to Claudia Freelander, who is sort of my right hand person on this. She listens to all the opening audition tapes and everything, and you send feedback to everybody. And you're, you do incredible work so that, you know, we, I wish we could bring 400, but we can only bring four. But Claudia, thank you so much. We do have some time for questions, but I also just want to talk a little bit about this space that we're in here at Carnegie Hall. It's the education wing. Ah, oh, wing is such a good word for that. Um, I've had the incredible, astonishing um, honor and privilege of doing a lot of outreach work with them this month. Um, I went back to Sing Sing Prison at the, um, in the middle of the month and that was juxtaposed, juxtaposed by working with eighth graders. And, um, and then I come here and I see these incredibly bright, passionate people. I walked into Sing Sing 10 months after being there in December. And for those of you who don't know, this incredible organization, the Weill Music Institute at Carnegie Hall, there, there's the saying, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Well, they've crumpled that up and ripped it up to shreds, and they're taking Carnegie Hall to the world. And they go, one, one of the many programs they do is they go into Sing Sing, which is a maximum security prison, and they're teaching men composition and how to play instruments. And they're on their eighth, ninth year? Yeah, so eight or nine. <laughs> Um, some of the men have, have been released. One of them is a volunteer at Carnegie Hall, still takes weekly violin lessons because they do this kind of follow through. Last year when I was there in December, um, there is a point to all of this, stay with me. Um, the, there was a man named Joseph and he was quite um, uh, isolated and uh, a loner and looked at the world like this, right? Very protective and uh, nobody really talked to him. He was new to the program, and he was a little bit of a wild card because they said, you know, we're not really sure who he is. And he had written a song for me, and it was an incredible song, and it was about, um, it was about the man that he killed. And I had no idea what it was because I hadn't seen it before, and it, I thought, what is happening as he was singing it for the first time in front of me? It's what I want for the Verity. Like, imagine like it's the first time it's been sung. So I was discovering it here, and he was right here. And the third verse was about love. And what about the times love was staring at him, but he turned away? And I was shocked at the end, and I just took to him, and I said, Joseph, thank you. It's an honor to sing your music. And he shook my hand back and he said, it's an honor to have you sing it. And I said, no, 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 the honor is mine. And he rose up and he said, I guess we should call it a shared honor then. And um, he stayed in this program. And when we, when we did the concert, he, the concert is open to the general prison population. This program has about 25 men in it that are, have earned the right to be in that program. And he dedicated the song to the victim of his crime in front of that audience. I came back in October, 10 months after visiting him the first time, and he walked into that room a different man. The light was on inside of him. And he came right over to me, shook my hand, Miss Joyce, I have so much to tell you. I said, great. I have a lot to tell you too, Joseph. I said, I've been taking your story out into the world. Oh, th thank you, thank you, that's great. He goes, but I wanna write an opera. <laughs> and he's serious about it. And he has the time to do it. <laughs> I think he will. I think he, I, you know, this is, this is gonna give him, and through that, through that work, through the music, he said, he said I had no idea 
that opera even existed. Because I've been listening to Wagner and Verdi and Puccini and all this emotion. Because you, my life has changed. Which means his daughter's life has changed. And as he continues this kind of work with Carnegie Hall and on his own, when he's released, we're getting back a, a citizen that um, is changed. It's incredible. And you know what this is? It's music. And it's an organization that believes music belongs to everyone. It's why I can tell you guys, I don't care if you have a career in opera or not. I would love it, but it's about so much more than that. These eighth graders, most of them of the same uh, racial makeup as the proportions in prison, right? So I'm looking at these gorgeous, amazing human beings who got up and said, so they're the ones who want to get into a performing arts high school, and Carnegie Hall takes them to get them ready for their audition, so they'll have a successful audition. And that's it, it's about two months, and it's over. And they stood up on their final concert, and the teacher asked them to say something they've learned, and they stood up and said, I've learned confidence. I've learned how to sing on my breath, and I'm like, really, already? <laughs> I've learned how to sing in Italian. I'm like, are you already, you know? <laughs> and they say it and their s smiles go like this. This is why I say the power to, to change all this stuff that we're feeling in the world lies right here. It's the only thing that makes sense. This opens up the doors to education, which is also paramount, but it's a different kind of education. And we need to start owning that, because all of you in here love, love music, opera, all kinds of music, and this is where we need to be putting our energy and the arts. It's why we need to support these guys. It's why we need to lift them up, not, not say, well, I don't know, the F sharp was a little, okay, they're working on it, but lift them up because we need that going out into the world. We need you guys supporting these kinds of programs we need you to come to the aud into performances ready to feel something, which means you have to be open. And that allows us to be open. And the more open we are, everything starts swirling that way. And I would just love to see us as a family own this a little bit more. And um, ah, see, I want to say fight for it, but that's not the word that I want to use. But I want to fight for it. I want to promote it. I want to embrace it. I want to just that high F. I want our whole universe to be doing that. I want more of that, you know, and the heart that all of you guys show. So that's a long way of saying we support you. We're behind you 100%. Do your work. Work really hard. Do the work so that you can bring more of that into the world. But a huge, huge, huge thank you to the people at Carnegie Hall and the Wild Music Institute, all the people who make it possible, they give money. I love that money, I love it. But it's, it's driven by people that know that music changes and transforms lives and they are out there doing it. So don't be discouraged, it's happening. You just have to seek it out and then you have to um, amplify it in whatever way you can and this is what changes things and it's what shifts things into, I'm assuming, the kind of world that we want. So don't just go home and say that was a great class. You know, go home and, and carry that with you. And that would be the best applause for us that we can imagine. I just had to say that because what they're doing, you guys are doing, are the Carnegie people here, can you kind of stand and we can thank you? I see Doug, anybody else? Amanda? Yeah, no, please don't be shy. Please don't be shy. Oh, and they're up here. Hi. Hi. Thank you, guys. Because that's the only thing that makes sense to me anymore. Any questions? <laughs> yes. We just come to the microphone, I think that helps the cameras. Hi. Hi. 
I'm so happy I'm here. <laughs> so um, one of my favorite lessons that you gave, one of my favorite master classes was one that you gave in Juilliard and you were talking about this inner voice. Yes. That we carry almost all the time yeah. and it speaks to us all the time and it's like destructive and it, tell, it tells us mean things. And I've been working about that, but I feel it's a very thin line. And somehow I'm there singing and I'm like positive energy. Yes, I'm doing it. Yes, phone aid. Yes, breath. And then it comes this high note, which was not that great. Or this coloratura was a little bit messy. And I'm like, um, should I run? Like, <laughs> uh -huh. um, am I worth like singing more? Should I just um, run out? Um, so can I ask you a question? Should you yeah. run? No. <laughs> should you just quit? No. So you have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The question will keep coming. It does. Mm -hmm. We're human. Mm -hmm. But you have the answer. And the more you have that answer, the less the question will come. Mm -hmm. Ooh, should I run? <sighs> We've been through this before. No. Mm -hmm. It happens. <laughs> Sorry, mm -hmm. can to So yeah, no, my question was, um, is this a thing that you practice more and more and it, at one point you're like, okay, I'm managing this, mm -hmm. I know this Has song. it gotten better for you? Um, yes, I think so, yeah. I think so. So I'm gonna assume that crescendo of getting better is gonna keep going. Because mm -hmm. it's a skill. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just like, okay, I'm gonna work on my inner voice and then it's thing. It's a sure. skill, it's a technique, you just develop it. Okay. And because we are human and you know, every performance situation has its own set of, ah. And so, mm -hmm. and, and you had a bad day, you, you know, exactly. you had a good day, so you're, you've got the, the power to kind of override it, and then one day you feel vulnerable, and so you don't feel as strong. Mm -hmm. So that voice is gonna come in more on those vulnerable days. So get a game plan, have mm -hmm. a technique that you know, oh God, I'm tired today, so I don't feel like singing, I don't think I'm good, but okay, when that voice comes in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask it to come back later, after I sing, or I'm just gonna remind myself now, there's no need to run, I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna, and, and in, the, in a day where you maybe feel a little weak, I would sing it up here. I would sing it mentally, nothing here, mm -hmm. and just visualize going through what you're doing, um, because your body remembers. Okay. And then just be really kind to yourself when it happens, because it will. It happens to me. Happened to me last night on the stage. Probably mm -hmm. four different times. Maybe mm -hmm. more, 14, I don't know. Uh -huh. And yeah. so, but my technique, you know, the, I keep going here and I just, I let it noodle its way out and, and I set the reset button on the next phrase. So yeah, it still happens, mm -hmm. but much less. And it doesn't stay around as long. Well, that's comforting. <laughs> yeah, you. you're getting there. Mm -hmm. I love it. You mm -hmm. are there. It's just, it's going to keep going. Yeah. There's a really great video, I should post this, um, that talks exactly to that, and it's demonstrated in the most shattering way. They have two best friends who have written down all those things that they get. Um, you're fat. You're not pretty. Um, he doesn't love you. Um, everybody else is better. Why well, you know, you're white. You're a wreck. You're terrible. And they gave that list to their friend, and the other friend had to read it out loud to them. And to hear those words spoken out loud, it's horrifying. We, we give it a pass up here because we're being diligent. We're, that makes me a better singer because it wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. It wasn't good enough. I can do it better. Mm -hmm. I can do it better. I can do it better. I can do it better. And then we're gone. Mm -hmm. And you know, we talk ourselves into wondering why we exist and being pretty convinced that we don't deserve to exist, right? And when you hear it spoken out loud, it's a really powerful video. I'll try and find it and post it. Um, you have to, to physicalize it, and then you can look at it and say, oh, no, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. Because you know it's destructive. Mm -hmm. You know it's poison. And it's not, ultimately, what you want is to be better, and it's actually working in the opposite opposite way. It's destroying. It's destructive. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Thank you. So um, I'll do one little plug and then I think, I think we're at time. 
Yeah, oh, basically, so I come back in December, I'm about to start um, a tour, um, and it's on my next recording, which is, um, it's titled, In War and Peace, Harmony Through Music. And it's the last thing I wanna leave you guys with. Um, in going through this, trying to actually put my money where my mouth is and saying, can music really affect change? Can it really open us a little bit more? I don't know if it will work or not, but I'm trying. So I'll bring that to you here in, um, in the middle of December. Um, I've realized, somebody sent me a quote, that the opposite of war is not peace. The opposite of war, and it can be an inner war, is creation. The opposite of war is not peace, it's creation. I said that at Sing Sing too, and they had the exact same reaction you guys just did. They all went, uh-huh. <laughs> That's where our power is. You guys are creating something up here. And when something is be being created, it is impossible to for it to be destroying. When you're building, that's the opposite of war and destruction. Unless this is actually destroying. So create, create, create. If all your energy is in there, turning that vowel, focusing in, feeling the pull, staying in the text, releasing the breath, all of that, if that's really where your energy is, there's no space for anything else. That just falls away. And it goes, okay, I guess you don't need me here. All right, I'll just be over here. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> so that is, I think, ultimately the most important kind of work singers can, can do, musicians can do, is to go into that and, and really just evict it. <laughs> and, and you do that by filling it up with creation. Yeah. I just want to thank you all so much. We, let's take our little final bow. Um, we, oh, wait, 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 this is very important. So I travel around the world and singers go, when can I do a master class with you? Portugal, Chile, Peru. And I say, did you, Santiago? I said, did you apply for my master class? What master class? So pay attention, people. <laughs> What's lovely is Carnegie Hall brings these students in. It's two video auditions online, an essay about why you sing, some references. And keep in, we don't have the date yet, but it'll be sometime in this fall next year. So in the spring, start looking for auditions, start thinking about this, because you can come from anywhere, but we want you to audition. So don't go, I didn't know. Do you do master classes? <laughs> Apply. Wake up, people, okay? So just keep that in, like, in the spring and stuff. Keep an eye out for the next round of auditions. But in the meantime, please thank all of these wonderful, brave <laughs> artists. Thank you.